good morning. It's Edna Keep here live with Free Coaching Friday. And today our topic is what is forced appreciation and why is it so important when you're buying apartment buildings? And remember, if you want my help to uh, build your multi-million dollar real estate portfolio and passive income, reach out to me at ednakeep.com, 90 days to 5K. Uh, forced appreciation. Okay, first of all, what is it? Uh, forced appreciation is uh, forcing the appreciation in the value of your building. How does that happen? Well, first of all, um, the there's a few different ways, but one of the things I want to point out to you first is uh, forced appreciation in a house doesn't work or anything for unit and under. That, the value of, of those are comparable only. Doesn't matter what you get your rents to, doesn't matter what you get your expenses to, that sort of thing. Now, in the apartment building world, that's where the difference lies. So if you your uh, rents by $100 a door, it increases the property a lot. I'm not gonna go into the details of uh, the formulas and all that kind of stuff, but there's a formula behind it that shows you if you decrease or if you increase your rents by $100 a door, how much uh, that's gonna increase the value of your building. Another thing that increases the value of your building is reducing expenses. Um, an example I'm gonna give you is back in 2012 when we bought, we bought 144 units. The, the place was a little bit run down. We had definitely had some renovations to do. We did uh, a lot of renovations in there. Basically, anytime anybody moved out, uh, we renovated the unit and, when, and then we increased the rents before they moved back in. And we did give rent increases across the board because we didn't have uh, 144 people move out. But on average, we increased the, the rents over $100 a unit. And that, uh, at that scale, of course, because it's different on a smaller unit, increased our the value of our building by over $2 million. So we were able to refinance it in three years, pull all our investors' money out, pay them all back, and get a really nice uh, payday for ourselves. So that is the importance of forced appreciation. That's how you um, uh, increase the value of your buildings. Um, uh, for example, right now I have a student working on a building that is very run down. Uh, it is, um, the owner's in a nursing home, so it hasn't been well. And, you know, uh, absentee landlords, uh, you know, and health is, is one of those reasons uh, really make for uh, good deals for us to buy sometimes. And in this case, she got herself a, a, a really good deal. She negotiated, she ended up with a really great uh, vendor take back and the, the son's looking after it. So um, he wants it off his plate. Not everybody wants to deal with real estate, not like, not like us. And uh, she's going to be able to increase the value of that building by renovating and increasing the rents so she'll make a profit of about $600,000 in 14 months. So um, that's why forced appreciation is so important. And those, those deals like that are ones I consider a home run. Uh, you don't get a home run every day. Uh, but lots of people, that's exactly what they shoot for each and every time. And that's fine. We've also bought buildings that were turnkey. Um, we, uh, the, the seller had already done all that. So they renovated all the units, they increased all the rents, uh, and then we came in and, and bought it at, or they might've ran it like that for several years and, and then wanted to sell because they were retiring or whatnot. And, um, we came in and bought it as a, as a turnkey. They both work. Um, you don't get the huge home run, but you also don't have all the work because if you buy a highly vacant building, and, and we've done that a few different times and it's worked really, really well, um, there's a lot of work involved. So you have to be prepared to do that work. And I want you to keep in mind that um, some people can't. They don't have the team. They don't have, they have to rely too much on others to figure out, you know, prices and everything else. And it, and it just doesn't work for them. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of ins and outs uh, of uh, getting a good deal and then getting it to the appreciated value that it wanted to be. It's not just snap your fingers and it's done. So that's the part, you know, you have to be prepared to work on a building uh, like my student is for 
12 months in order to get it financeable at the new level. And some people don't want to do that. That's where the turnkey uh, properties come in. So you buy the turnkey, somebody else has done all the work. You still make the cash flow, you just don't make the, uh, the huge uh, upside uh, through the forced depreciation. Uh, so the again, forced depreciation comes through increasing the rents on your building and decreasing the expenses. And that, that those are really sweetheart deals when you can get them. And if you're prepared to do the work, because like I said, it's not an easy peasy thing. You've got work to do. Um, and it's, it's important because that is what gets you your big paydays. And you know, out of the, as, well, as long as we've been doing this now for uh, 12 years, uh, that the one that I just spoke about, the 144 unit, that was a good home run for us. Uh, we were able to pay investors back in 30 months through the forced appreciation. We had another 24 unit uh, that we were able to pay our investors back in 18 months. Same thing, very under under rented, uh, hadn't been renovated basically since they were built back in, I think it was 1968. Uh, then we refinanced got all the investors paid out, had a nice payday, and and uh, went on to just uh, have it as cash flow, a cash flowing mortgage pay down building. Uh, we bought a few uh, recently, uh, you know, even in different parts of Saskatchewan, Esther AZ, Rokenville, Musselman, uh, again, very highly vacant when we took over. So not, not, not so much work to do renovations and stuff, but you know what, it was just somebody who was a builder who wasn't great at dealing with tenants and getting the building tenanted and financed properly. And so we got ourselves a good deal on purchase and we did that work and that was our forced appreciation in there. So those are the ones that can really put a lot of money in your pocket. Great for people who want to make this a full-time career because I mean, imagine you put $600,000 in your pocket in uh, in a deal like that, that can carry you for an awful long time. So uh, hopefully you get, uh, get yourselves a deal like that. If you need my help, again, reach out to me at ednakeep.com. I'd love to help you do that. We've had several. Uh, so we, we love to be able to help our students get some home, uh, home runs like that as well. Hey, good morning. Hey, hi, Walter. Thank you. Yes, thank you for the great laser coaching call. Walter gave me a little bit of coaching at the same time I was giving him coaching. <laughs> He's in an area that we have a challenging building, so I'm just asking him a few things. So, you know, that's the power of your network, people. You know, uh, I, I love that, and, and I think it's so powerful. You got, you, you're, you're coaching somebody, and they're coaching you at the same time. How cool is that? Um, Good morning, Joanne. Hey, John, working on rentals in our BC building, day 43. I bet you're going to get some great forced appreciation there. I can't wait to hear the full story. Uh, hey, good morning, Ben. How are you? Nice to see you guys on. I have to rush off this morning. I've got back-to-back -back appointments, so it was so good to share that information with you. And like I said, if you need my help uh, increasing your portfolio or uh, learning how to work with other people's money, and uh, getting some of those forced appreciation buildings, those, uh, those buildings that are really undervalued, uh, reach out to me at ednakeep.com. Have a great Friday and a great weekend. Bye for now.